Hey YouTube subscribers and uh, new watchers, viewers, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to uh, take you through a tutorial how to fix a start error or a problem with your car when you come to your car in the morning and the car wouldn't start. Um, I'm going to divide this specific video into two sections. In the first section we're going to talk to you about uh, what happened when you come to the car and uh, you take your keys, you take your fob, you try to open the car, uh, the car may open or may not open, uh, but you go to the ignition switch, you try to turn the ignition switch and nothing comes up on the car, the car wouldn't start. On the second section, we're going to talk about situation where you put the keys in the ignition switch, you turn the ignition switch, the engine will spin, the engine will turn, but the car doesn't fire up. So when you come in the morning to your car and the car is not working, or you don't get any power from the key on the dashboard, um, or anything else, there's several different reasons that will cause that. We're going to go through the troubleshooting process on this specific car today um, to find out what will make that car not work. What are the possibilities and what are the ways to resolve these issues, to um, troubleshoot the issues to a point where if you at least can determine what might be the problem. So even though there is a very good possibility that some of the things I'm going to talk about you're not going to be able to fix yourself, there is some of the things you're going to be able to troubleshoot and at least it will give you the idea of what the problem is. So if you go to a repair shop, you already uh, have some of the solution. So stay tuned, join me for this amazing video today. Let's look at uh, all the options and all the troubleshooting we can. I'm going to uh, tell you, give you all the information of what the tools that you need, what are the equipment that you, you should have to be able to troubleshoot. This is your choice to try and repair your car and I can only give you the information and help you. Regardless of that, you're always welcome to call me to my shop and I'll have my phone number listed on the video. You can always call me to my shop and I'll help you and I'll guide you and I'll try to do everything I can to help you. Stay tuned for the video. Let's see what we can do. So this is an ignition switch. That's actually from uh, 2000, I think, CLK320. This is the key that you have. And it's not enough that the ignition switch and the key are good. You also have to have communication with the engine control unit. This is your engine control unit. Now, as I said before, in the old cars, it was a mechanical system that worked. On the newer cars, everything is electronics. If you, for whatever reason, have even one of the wires not communicating or not uh, doing what it's supposed to do, what it's made to do, there's a very good chance, very fair chance that your car is not going to work. Uh, but let's, uh, under the assumption that uh, these three parts or all your theft relevant parts are okay, very important that you understand that these parts are communicating through something that Mercedes calls a signal acquisition and actuation module. Short for that is SAM, some, call, some people will call it SAM. The signal acquisition and actuation module is a very intelligent fuse box, uh, but uh, some of the signal acquisition modules, if they have the problem, you can replace them. They're not considered as a theft relevant part. You can just go buy one, put one back inside, they don't require programming up to a certain model. From a certain model, from a certain year and up, they do require programming. So you got a voltmeter uh, that will uh, read how much power you get out, out of your battery. Not only how much power you get out of your battery, but how much you get it under load and how many amps. Just remember that the car needs, uh, the new car needs 12 volts battery to be able to work and they need also a cranking power, which is the amps power of the battery. All right, so I got um, I got a voltmeter and I got one bad battery. I know it's bad and one good battery. And I want to show you the difference in the batteries. So I'll connect it first to the good battery. And of course, always remember ground to ground, plus to plus. You can mix it, but I connect it to the good battery. And you can see that I have 12 volts or at least 12 volts. I have closer to 13 volts, which is pretty good on the battery. And then uh, I'm going to put a load. When I actually uh, push that button here, it's going to put a load um, on the battery itself and register how many amps coming out of the battery. As you know, uh, you can see over here that the different batteries got different amp power. This one got 700 cranking power, this one got 680, which is pretty good for a smaller, a little smaller battery. But I'm gonna put a load on that and it drops down to almost the first line of the week, which is pretty, uh, still pretty decent. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many amps I'm putting on the battery to try and uh, see if the battery is good. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, this tool is also uh, accurate, but when I put a certain load on that and that will be equal to about a starter load, the battery is still registering good. I'm going to check the other battery and you can see over here, the battery is registering very low in the 12 volts. Uh, now when I'm going to put the load on this one, 
it drops down to uh, very weak. As a matter of fact, on a 12 volts, if it drops anywhere within the yellow, which is already on the yellow, it means that the battery is weak. But when I put, uh, try to put like, let's say, um, I try to open the window, so that's a little low. When I try to open the window, the battery just completely gonna die and I'm gonna produce uh, any power. If I try to put the starter mode on that, obviously you can see that the battery is very bad. So that's the difference between a good battery and a bad battery. And that's why uh, I'm very adamant about checking your batteries first. Before anything else, check your battery, see if you got a good battery or a bad battery. But you cannot use a used key uh, for your vehicle. From the simple reason that every key is made specifically for a vehicle and you cannot change it. So if you see a key on eBay or something like that, there is nothing that you can do with this key. Uh, so we're gonna go inside the car now and see what are the possibilities of key not working. Um, and then we're going to start and troubleshoot the signal acquisition module and see if there is a problem with the fuses on the relays, how we fix that. So stay with me, stay tuned and let's go inside the car. Let's say hypothetically you got into the car, um, your key worked on the locks, the locks came up, the locks came down, you go in, you put the key in the ignition switch but nothing happens. What you do next with the car is very important to determine what might be the problem. Because um, if you got into the car and you put the key in and nothing happens, the dash doesn't even come on, it means that there is no communication between the key and the ignition switch. If there is no communication between the key and the ignition switch, regardless of whose fault it is, it might be the ignition switch, the car is not going to respond. So for the sake of this video, I got a key from a different car. And I want you to see what happened when I put a different key inside. Nothing. It's possible that the key is bad, it's possible that the ignition switch is bad. There is no way to determine. Um, and of course, there is a way to determine when you bring it to a shop, but for you at the house, when you woke up in the morning and you put the key inside the ignition, even if it opened the door, nothing happened. There is a possibility that you got a bad key. There is a possibility that you got a bad ignition switch. So I put the key in. I can turn it to position number two. All the lights come up. Okay, so I put the right key inside the ignition. I turn to position number two. Nothing happens. If nothing happens, if I try to crank it, let's say I'm trying to start it. If I try to start it like that and the car doesn't start, then I'm going to go outside and take the power probe and go to the starter relay and try to figure out why the starter doesn't turn. But let's say you put the key in and nothing happened. You know that you have no communication with your uh, ignition switch. Let's say you turn the key to position number two, the lights come on and then you try to start but nothing happened. Follow me on the next video. Let's talk about what's the next uh, steps that you can take. Okay, so we talked about the key, you put the key in, you do have power coming from the switch. Uh, now what you have to do is you have to rule out the starter. There is a very good possibility that your starter is not working and you want to make sure that your starter is good. Um, you have to pull the diagram of where the starter relay, and we already spoke about the relay. You have to pull the diagram of where your starter relay is located in your car. Various vehicles, the relay can be in many different places. There is always a relay though. Um, of course, uh, the basic things is to check all the fuses. There are several different fuses. So after you check the fuses and the fuses are good, if they're not good, obviously change them, make sure they're good. And you want to check uh, next to check if your starter is good. You're going to need uh, the power probe. What you have to do, you have to connect the power and the ground to the car. So you got your uh, power probe hooked up and you get 12 volts on the power probe. Now if you didn't get 12 volts on the power probe, you need to make sure that you have either a good battery, again I'm not going to stress enough about the good battery, or you got a jump start on your car that provides you uh, 12 volts. So you got 12 volts coming on your power probe and you got your diagram that will show you where the relay for your starter is. In that case it's this relay here and we're going to open the fuse box in a second and find this relay. And in my case, I got a little tool, uh, which I recommend, very highly recommend to get a tool. It's gonna to be easier to use a tool than uh, to just uh, try and push uh, some kind of a wire inside the slot. But I got a tool that will give me circuit 87 in the middle. And circuit 87 on uh, any Mercedes relay is the circuit that will give the high voltage power to the module or the motor that is connected to that. So I got a tool, I got the power probe, I'm opening the fuse box. And I look for the identical, uh, um, identical diagram, which in that case, this is one, uh, this one was right here. I put them one next to each other and I see what the starter fuse is. This one. 
before I remove the um, starter fuse, I really want to make sure that I get 12 volts to the fuse box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power probe and I'm going to touch this slot that's coming from the power directly to the fuse box. And I see that I do get 12.7, which means first that my battery is really good, and second that the fuse box is getting the power. After I figured out that I do have 12 volts coming to the signal acquisition module, I'll take the starter relay out, take my tool, and I put my tool back inside instead of the uh, fuse box, and I go to um, I go to slot number 87, to circuit number 87, which is this one right here. That's what's going to give the power after the relay close the circuit. And I'll go and touch circuit 87 and give it power and hope that the starter really turns. If the starter turns and the key is the, in the ignition and as we spoke before, all the circuits are working inside the car, the battery is good, the car should start. If the car still doesn't start after it gets started to the car, we have more issues, we've got to troubleshoot and that's going to come up shortly. But I got circuit 87, right now it's closed on the circuit which shows me that everything is good to try and give it the power. If I give it the power right now, um, if I have the key under the assumption that the key is in position number two, the car should start. So I'm going to start, try and give it the power and see what happens. Obviously, you can hear that the starter turning, the engine is turning. Um, I do get power from the starter, the starter is fine. I'm going to put the key in position number two. So I got my key in position number two before it started the starter. I got my power probe ready with 12.3 uh, 12, uh, 12 volts. And I got my uh, relay tool inside. I'm going to give it power to uh, circuit 87 and we'll see if the car fires up. And it doesn't. Now why the car still doesn't start? I'm gonna try to figure out why the car gets started. Uh, the key, we, we have power, everything else is good, but still the car doesn't start. We said there's not a whole lot you can do if you got a bad key, you gotta get the new key. There's not a whole lot you can do if you got a bad ignition switch. Um, but what if the car does turn? So until now we were talking if the car doesn't turn, how do you check your starter to make sure your starter is good? But let's say your starter is good and you gave it power and the starter, just starter turns, but the car still doesn't start. As we said, there are four things that your car needs to start. You need to have fuel, you need to have spark, you need to have um, combustion, which is the good compression, and you need to have a place for all these gases to escape, which is basically your muffler. You gotta make sure your muffler, your catalytic converters are not clogged. But what if all four of them um, are good and your car still doesn't start? How are you gonna measure to make sure that every single one of them is good? Here I got three tools that you're gonna have to have to be able to measure them. And uh, as I showed you before, you have the power probe that in that case will give you 12.6 volts. Um, you have to have your fuel gauge to tell you if you have fuel coming into your, uh, into your combustion chamber. You have to know if your fuel pressure is right, but if your fuel pressure is a little too low. If your fuel pressure is low or if there's no fuel pressure at all, then you know you might have a bad pump. At least that, or maybe a pump relay, or maybe fuse. The next thing you need to know is if you get fuel. The fuel pressure the place where you can check your fuel pressure is located in front of the engine. Uh, there is a little nipple that will cover that, a little cover that will cover that. It sits right in here and will cover the, the place where the fuel can come out. But what you gotta do is you gotta open that nipple, connect the fuel gauge to it, and you gotta check what your fuel level is. So as a part of the troubleshooting to find out why uh, your car is not working, you gotta see if you're actually getting fuel into the system. Let's see, in that case, if we get fuel. So, of course, I know the car, I know that the fuel is good, but you gotta get on a 278 engine, you gotta get at the bare minimum 55 to 60 uh, pounds per square inch of uh, fuel. Over here, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I uh, started it, it built already 50 PSI. So, obviously, we know that the fuel pump is working, and we know that we're getting uh, fuel pressure. I wanna give uh, power to the starter anyway, uh, to see what happened, to see if it works. But um, I'm going to give power directly to the starter 
and we're gonna see if it builds up to about 60 psi and if uh, the car starts. So as you can see, car built to about uh, the engine built to about 60 psi, 50, 70 psi, and uh, the car is running. All right. So with this engine, uh, obviously the starter is good. The fuel comes to uh, the engine, and we could see that, we could see the 60 PSI. Uh, the relay is working fine, actually in that case it's not the relay, it's my little tool that I put in. But I can take the tool out and put uh, the relay back in. This is the relay, and I'm gonna locate it back. Relay is working fine, I got driver authorization from the key. Um, I have good uh, compression, I'm assuming, because obviously the engine is working. I'm assuming it's what it's supposed to be. And I don't have any fault codes on crankshaft position sensor or anything like that that can get, uh, that can shut down the engine electronics. Um, and if all these perimeters are matched, there is nothing for the engine to do than crank up. Now, you might have one of them, obviously you're watching this video, so you have some kind of a trouble. You might have one of them um, uh, at fault. And that's why your engine is not working. Uh, now, if you turn the, you were able to get fuel. The fuel, when you try to uh, turn the key to position number two, does come to about 50, 40, 50, even 30 PSI. You build some kind of a pressure on the fuel pump, and the relay is good. You change the relay, you know that the relay is good, and you give power to the starter, and the starter will turn, but the car still doesn't start. There is a very good possibility that your crankshaft position sensor is at fault. And the crankshaft position sensor, the uh, purpose of that is to tell the computer where is the position of the engine. So the computer knows which uh, cylinder to fire up, which cylinder to uh, inject fuel into, and coordinate all the ignition of the engine at the same time. Uh, and for that purpose, you should have this tool here, which is the onboard diagnostics. So. If you do have the fuel pressure and the relay is good and you know your key is good, your ignition switch is good, all the lights come up, plug this computer and try to read the fault code, the uh, troubled fault codes. Put that on your onboard diagnostics, usually it's under the dash on the driver's side. Um, connect that, read the codes and see if you get any faults on any kind of the engine compartment. If you got a bad crankshaft position sensor, if your uh, camshaft's retarding behind the crankshaft position, if you have any kind of other fault codes that might give trouble to the engine. Um, if you don't have, and I've seen a lot of situations where there is no fault code and the engine still doesn't run, you have a different problem. Uh, it might be maybe the, the intake manifold is not tied in good and it sucks too much air and the amount of fuel it's getting in is not enough to ignite the combustion chamber or, uh, or a few other more severe situations like blown head gaskets uh, but that will relate to the poor uh, combustion. By that time, right now, with all the information I gave you, you can't figure out what the problem is. So, of course, first of all, you can always call us and I'll try to walk you through uh, on several different ways that you might be able to fix the issue. But uh, if we still couldn't figure it out, then the only uh, solution you'll have from that point is to take the car to a repair shop. Tow it to a reliable repair shop. Of course, always check reviews of a repair shop. Make sure you're taking it to somebody honest and not somebody that just tried to pay the bills with your money. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you were able to get more information, get a little more uh, troubleshooting uh, uh, process on these videos. As always, you can write me down uh, a comment and I'll respond as soon as I can. Uh, or you can, of course, call the shop and we'll try to do everything we can to try and uh, guide you through the resolution over the phone. Thanks for watching um, and subscribe to my channel.